South Korea, like many other developed countries, has set a target for achieving zero net carbon emissions as part of the fight against climate change. President Moon has committed the country to going carbon neutral by 2050. That entails transitioning to renewable energy sources, one of the most cutting-edge sources being hydrogen. Earlier this week, in fact, Korea's biggest automaker, Hyundai Motor, unveiled some new prototype hydrogen cars and concepts and will phase out combustion engines entirely just a few years from now. For more on Korea's efforts to go carbon neutral, we have our Om Ji Young here in the studio today to explain. Ji Young, good to have you here today. Good afternoon. Well, Ji Young, uh, hydrogen is one of the most talked about uh, ways of achieving carbon neutrality. So tell us, why is it that some see this as almost a silver bullet in achieving that goal? Um, Devin, as you said, uh, one of the solutions that uh, we hear a lot about these days when it comes to tackling climate change is hydrogen. In the future, production of hydrogen will be done using renewable energy. And that means we won't have to worry about depletion. Also, there will be less concerns over greenhouse gas emissions with hydrogen. So I believe hydrogen will be the future energy source. But based on where we are today, the hype about hydrogen is yet to be justified. For now, hydrogen is mainly made by extracting it from coal and natural gas in a pollution-heavy process, giving it the labels brown hydrogen or gray hydrogen. Cleaner versions include blue hydrogen, which is also produced from fossil fuels, but it incorporates carbon capture and storage technology. Green hydrogen is where the electricity produced through renewable sources like wind and solar energy separate hydrogen from fresh water. Proponents of a hydrogen economy say the latest developments in green hydrogen production technologies, along with global efforts towards sustainability, are making it more appealing. According to data by McKinsey, 18 percent of the total energy demand by 2050 could be met by hydrogen production. The market for hydrogen and related technology is expected to have revenues of more than 2.5 trillion U.S. dollars per year, with more than 30 million jobs created globally. Well, ji you've described uh, very uh, thoroughly uh, how uh, hydrogen is produced and uh, what it's all about. Uh, but one of the things that comes to mind, I think, for most of us for hydrogen is cars, uh, transport more generally. So tell us about that. Um, that's right, Devin. In fact, South Korea's biggest automaker, Hyundai Motor Group, announced an ambitious vision for making hydrogen-powered cars and other products mainstream by 2040. The group pledged to stop selling combustion engine vehicles entirely in South Korea by 2040. What does Hyundai Motor Group's vision for future hydrogen society look like? Our vision covers not only passenger and commercial vehicles, but also various types of transportation, such as trams, trains, ships, and urban air mobility. Our vision is to apply hydrogen energy in all areas of life and industry, such as our homes, workplaces, and factories. Leaders of 15 major groups involved in the sector, including Hyundai Motor Chairman Jung Lee Son and SK Group Chairman Choi Tae-won, gathered on Wednesday for the Korea H2 Business Summit. The new body aims to stimulate investment in the hydrogen sector and help Korea go carbon neutral. The discussions were held on the sidelines of South Korea's biggest hydrogen industry exhibition, which also kicked off on Wednesday. An air-purifying hydrogen fuel tram that can carry 100 people at once, a mobile hydrogen refueling station that can be used in remote areas, and a hydrogen-powered car that can recognize a driver's voice and change the position of the steering wheel. Visitors encountered all these at the H2 Mobility Plus Energy Show, where more than 150 companies and research institutions from 12 countries participated. At the event, Hyundai Motor Group revealed its first prototype of a hydrogen-powered hybrid sports car called the Vision FK, which can go from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in just four seconds. Hyundai also unveiled an autonomous new container transport vehicle called eBogey Trailer Drone. As many companies from home and abroad gather at this event to share their technologies and meet new business partners, I believe it can be a growth engine for the hydrogen industry and help tackle climate change.
Well, Jiang, the events you were just telling us about uh, did get a lot of attention around the world, especially the uh, the, the e bogey uh, vehicle for uh, transport of cargo. Um, but this focus on hydrogen is in line with Korea's vision for going carbon neutral by uh, 2050. So, tell us more about that vision for hydrogen in particular. Sure, that in South Korea is expected to use 16.9 million tons of hydrogen in 2050. This is seven times what the country consumed in 2015, according to the McKinsey report. One of the Presidential Committee on Carbon Neutrality's roadmap scenarios involves a 100 percent reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. That would involve a complete suspension of coal and LNG development, and these will be replaced by green hydrogen technology. Also, electric and hydrogen vehicles would make up 97 percent of vehicles in the country. But with the current lack of hydrogen refueling stations, there could be a setback in increasing the number of eco-friendly vehicles. Drivers at this refueling station have to make an appointment to fill up their hydrogen cars. One hydrogen dr car driver said although he's happy with his car's fuel efficiency and lack of pollutants, a better refueling infrastructure is still needed. One of the biggest drawbacks of driving hydrogen cars is the issue of refueling stations. There are only about 74 stations nationwide, so in the past, I had to travel 30 kilometers just to fill up the car. The government plans to build more refueling infrastructure to help make drivers' lives easier and speed up the adoption of hydrogen cars. It expects the number of refueling stations to stand at around 310 next year and at roughly 1,200 in 2040. However, an expert suggested South Korea should diversify its investment in terms of future energy until green hydrogen can be mass produced and hydrogen infrastructure develops enough globally, which could take about 20 years. South Korea is seen to be at the world's top level in hydrogen vehicles and systems. About three-quarters of the automobiles produced by the country are bound for export. But worldwide, infrastructure to accommodate hydrogen cars is not fully developed, including a lack of refueling stations. He added that development and widespread adoption of electric cars should be in place first, along with the development development of hydrogen technology. But he stressed that in the long run, hydrogen is the way to go and is destined to become a major future energy source. Well, if we look back and see how, how fast Korea has adopted generally electric car infrastructure, then hopefully uh, and lo likely will be the case, uh, Ji Young. Thank you for that thorough reporting today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.